Has anyone ever thought about lifting a truck off the ground with their bare hands? For humans, that's pure fantasy. But for one of nature's true strongmen, the ocean, it's just business as usual. Thousands of years ago, a mega tsunami swept across Africa, hurling boulders weighing up to 700 tons as if they were nothing more than tiny pebbles. The raw power of this ancient deluge made the tsunamis of 2004 in Indonesia and 2011 in Japan look small, more like ripples in a kiddie pool than true natural disasters. To put into perspective just how terrifying a regular tsunami can be, consider that the waves in Japan once reached as high as 133 feet. The Indian Ocean tsunami was slightly smaller, but it claimed the lives of over 200,000 people across several countries. But even those catastrophic events pale in comparison to the disaster that came next, one that defied imagination. For a long time, some Scientists believe that waves of such monstrous height existed only in science fiction. That is, until they found enormous boulders tossed far inland, giant slabs of rock that could only have been moved by waves at least 800 feet tall. And the culprit behind this act of geological vandalism was a volcano that exploded, sending a massive portion of itself crashing into the ocean and triggering one of the most powerful tsunamis the Earth has ever seen. Normally, tsunamis are triggered by undersea earthquakes, when tectonic plates collide and unleash violent tremors beneath the ocean floor. But volcanoes are just as capable of creating disasters, sometimes even more ferocious than anything an earthquake can muster. Take for example the infamous Krakatoa volcano in Indonesia, which erupted continuously for six months in 1883 before finally exploding in a blast so loud it was heard as far away as Australia. This eruption unleashed several tsunamis with waves nearly 100 feet tall, yet even those seemed like a gentle toe dip compared to the cannonball fired by the ancient mega tsunami. The volcano responsible for that cataclysmic event was truly gigantic. It didn't just collapse, it lost a chunk so massive it was 10 times the size of Mount Everest. It was as if nature decided to run a wild experiment by tossing an entire mountain into the sea just to see what would happen. When an entire side of the volcano tumbled into the Atlantic, the waves it produced were so tall, they could have swallowed the Statue of Liberty three times over, and the force was enough to destroy an island more than 30 miles away. The volcano behind this jaw-dropping scene was called Fogo, located on Fogo Island. This island is basically just a lone volcano rising out of the sea, formed by a magma hotspot, a place where molten rock kept bubbling up and piling layer upon layer, almost like a stack of pancakes. After seven major eruptions, Fogo finally poked its head above the waves, but its dramatic appearance was really more like a ticking time bomb. As the volcano grew, it got heavier and heavier, but the magma chamber beneath it couldn't keep up with all that weight, making the entire structure vulnerable to collapse, even from a minor earthquake. Fogo Island checked every box for bad luck, too tall, too heavy, and built on a foundation that was anything but solid. As the volcano kept growing, its sheer weight pressed down on the magma below, trapping it so the lava couldn't rise and flow freely. It just thickened beneath the surface, simmering like a pot of soup left on the burner for too long. Gases and magma built up, pressure mounted, and eventually everything erupted in a violent explosion. Scientists call this a flank collapse, when half the mountain suddenly slides into the ocean, unleashing a colossal tsunami. Most volcanic islands formed this way have long since vanished, but Fogo is still very much alive, with its most recent eruption occurring in 2014. On average, this volcano wakes up about every 20 years. For many years, scientists believed only big, bulky volcanic islands could collapse like that. But recent research shows that even smaller islands, ones that look stable enough, aren't immune to the same fate. The truth is, a smaller mass might make an island look safer, but if it's built on weak ground or perched near major fault lines, the risk of collapse is always lurking. Take Santa Maria, for example. It's only about 1 1 70th the size of Hawaii, but it has collapsed multiple times. Not because it wanted to, but because it stands on loose marine sediment right next to a fault line where three tectonic plates meet. Every time the volcano erupts, the island rises up again, but when it collapses, it sinks like a buoy. This constant up and down means Santa Maria has popped in and out of the ocean like a disappearing act, and every time it surfaces, there's a chance for another tsunami. 
Another volcano with a turbulent history is Pa in Guatemala. Between 2011 and 2013, scientists detected strange movements in the earth and rock layers there, signs that something was stirring deep below. In 2014, Pa erupted, but luckily it didn't collapse. Still, the danger is ever-present. If magma ever gets trapped inside, just like with Fogo, everything could blow sky high again. About a thousand years ago, Pa did collapse, triggering a massive landslide that traveled more than 15 miles. Since then, it has rebuilt itself like a phoenix rising from the ashes, but the threat has never truly disappeared. Today, the scenario of a catastrophic collapse triggering a mega tsunami can still happen, especially on volcanic islands like Hawaii, La Palma in Spain, or various parts of the Caribbean. It only takes the right combination, a loose foundation, steep slopes, and trapped magma, and a collapse could happen at any moment. In 2018, a not Krakatau, the offspring of Krakatoa, lost a huge chunk of its structure during an eruption creating a tsunami. However, compared to some of history's disasters, that was still just small potatoes. Some of the most dramatic events include the collapse of Ritter Island in 1888, which saw the island's height drop from over 2,000 feet to just 460 feet. Or the infamous 1958 landslide in Latuya Bay, Alaska, when a 7.8 magnitude earthquake triggered a wave taller than the Empire State Building, barreling through the bay at highway speeds. While only five people lost their lives, the scars of destruction are still clearly visible from the air even today. Even the melting of glaciers and polar ice caps can cause volcanoes to collapse. When the ice melts away, the sudden drop in pressure on the Earth's crust throws the whole structure off balance. This is called isostatic rebound. It's a bit like someone yanking a chair out from under a person who's been sitting still for centuries. On top of that, some volcanic islands grow as lava pours into the sea, creating new land called lava deltas. But these new stretches of land are unstable and can collapse without warning, sending both fresh earth and sometimes any creatures living on it straight back into the ocean. So next time you're stretched out on the beach of a volcanic island dreaming of paradise, don't forget that you might actually be lounging on a geological time bomb with a flair for surprises. From mountains plunging into the sea to sudden lava deltas collapsing, volcanoes have never stopped serving up dramatic plot twists for planet Earth.